I bet you're good and scared, huh? Oh, you should be because... Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'll be doing an unboxing of the Plum Island Horror from GMT Games, designed by the great Herman Lutman, who's designed many, 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 many wonderful solo experiences. You'll see this one is a cooperative game, but of course the rules of fully cooperative games means they're fully solo friendly. So um, it's a huge, huge uh, box. You know, it's one of the three inch boxes. Um, let's see what it says. Solo su suitability is high and complexity is low. A superstorm slammed into Plum Island off the east coast of the U.S. and plunged the island into a particularly horrifying apocalyptic nightmare. The island's secret biological research facility suffered catastrophic damage and was quickly inundated with a hor horrifically lethal mixture of chemicals. The poor souls who succumbed to the toxins were reanimated as monstrously altered mutations. But the true horror was yet to come. That's kind of scary, believe me. So being a cooperative game, um, you can play up to four players uh, with this, and it says it's about 45 minutes per player. So I don't know how that translates to solo, um, because sometimes the analysis for analysis can really get you. So. Anyway, I like the way the, uh, the front here is made up to look like an old comic book. You see the 10 cent price tag, May, November, number, number 35 from May. Um, very cool artwork. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out who did all the original art as we dig into the box. All right. So we start out with the rule book. Very nice. The, of course, the now obligatory uh, GMT matte finish stock. It's what it'd be about, let's see, 32 pages. Very large print. I mean, not very large, you know, it's not like a uh, large print book or anything like that, but uh, you know, it's not dense and full color, obviously. So we've got our introduction, game overview setup, gameplay, victory defeat. Looks like the whole goes up to game modes, starts getting defined at page 30 so most of this is going to be rules so they have a rules reference notation guide where r12 means go to page 12 and rg5 says go to page 5 of the reference guide so let's see we're gonna have a reference guide here and there it is all right so we start out we obviously are gonna have cards and faction mats and standees bravo for not doing miniatures. I'm sure they might add that as an expansion maybe later, but standees do just fine. And that looks, those look really cool. And we've got our dice. And it's like other Herman Lutman games, the dice are gonna hate you. Thinking of uh, Dawn of the Zeds. All right. So anyway, it looks like the rules just kind of guide you through, obviously with steps here. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, guide you through very easily ex describing how to set up, how to play. And then again, the more detail detailed rules here, the heal action, things like that. So it looks very easy to read, easy to follow. And you have a reference guide on the back. Oh, excuse me. This is a reference guide. Okay, they, uh, reference, you know, a quick reference for your charts on the back of the rules. So now we got the reference guide. This feels a little thicker and it is exactly four pages thicker at 36 pages. Also in the top quality GMT matte stock. What does this one feature here? Reference guide. Using this reference guide, this booklet is intended as a reference, obviously, for all rules queries not answered in the main rule book. Unlike the rule book, this booklet doesn't expressly teach players how to play the game. Players should first read the rule book in its entirety before referring to this booklet. However, the included example play provides an overview of gameplay and highlights some strategy tips to employ in play. This is kind of like the new trend um, in a lot of games. Um, Fantasy Flight does this a lot. 
where they do this. They give you, they teach you how to play the game basically. And then this is where you look up for more detailed rules, clarifications, things like that. So, describes the game board, the components, quick overview there, special units and examples of play. There's your background on your VIP civilian units. And like I said, there's an example of play in here, game round one, game round two. So it's kind of like what used to be the playbook in a lot of GMT games. They're now calling in this one a reference guide. And here's our faction mats we saw earlier. So we have the Greenport Township. Andrew and Mayberry is the mayor. How clever is that? And these are single-sided. These are the good old GMT coded cardstock. We have the Islanders Athletic Club, the Horror Mutations, Birds of Prey, Infected Sasquatch, Leper Messiahs, Most Wanted, Murder Hornets, oh no, the Murder Hornets, and Wild-Eyed Rats. And then we've got the Plum Island Constabulary, The PIRL Security Services, Pearl, the National Guard, and Jess Parmenter. I wonder if she's related to Captain, related to Captain Parmenter from F Troop. Oh, obviously, obviously we are. Good old, good old Herman. We've got Forrest O'Rourke, Larry Agarn, Homer Pyle, Mac Reacher. Oh wow. Oh, the tongue-in-cheek references. The NPC units at the Wolverines. My knows uh, Red Dawn. We got Biff Rogers, Sergeant Rock York, Jason Kruger. Oh goodness, Ellie Mae Bobby. <laughs> Can you say eleven? And Fort Courage is the compound. So obviously Herman, big fan of F Troop. Good job there, man. All right, so now we've got our, oh, we've got some, we've got one game round track here. Let's see what we've got. Game round track, obviously it's gonna set next to the board. You track your biohazard, your overrun points, your evacuation points. The game round looks like it plays over three days and nine turns. Morning, afternoon, and night of three consecutive days. You store your biohazard cubes here, your available, your holding pool, and your hit cubes. Holding pool, pool, holding pool. All right, so then we got a reference sheet here for the VIP civilians. Cruise ship passengers, the pump you up gem. And then another quick reference sequence of play. Also again, a nice card stop. And then we've got our cardboard our punch boards here. So we have our first sheet. These are our supply markers, damage markers, just kind of general counters, some locations for courage, surplus armory, the paddy wagon, uh, tracking, tracking game around, evacuation points, biohazard, total overrun points. We saw those on the uh, tracking chart. Got some weapons, got Molotovs, pistols, got a uh, Riverboat here, the Cheyenne Sky, Coast Guard helicopter, and the horrors moved. Overrun markers stunned, damages. Let me see the other side of those. And then we've got our Murder of Horrors counters. Murder of Horrors. So these all just say Murder of Horrors. And on the back they say Murder of Horrors. That'll be interesting. And then we have our first sheet of standees. Or looks like our only sheet of standees. So we've got our different faction groups color coded here. And then we're gonna obviously gonna have standee holders as well. Yeah, check the other side there. Whoop! And they punch pretty cleanly. And they're pre-rounded. Here's here is Homer Pyle. Surprise! 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 And they punch very cleanly. 
And I got some more markers here. Looks like uh, civilians. One, two, three. Oh, it identifies who they are. The Lewis family, the Walker family, the Vandergrump family, the Carditsian family. Hmm. And we have a few more standees here for NBC's The Wolverine Shore Patrol and the Hero of the Day. And some more Murder of Horrors counters as well. And then finally, another sheet of little markers. Um, these are tokens. I'm wondering if we have a chip pull mechanic in here. So we've got the Plum Island Police, the Neighborhood Watch, the Greenport Township, the Islanders, all the factions are represented here. Combat markers, you've used in action. These are optional reminder tokens, obviously. And that's a half sheet. All right. And then we've got our game board. We'll take a look at that in a second. It's a big board, it's an eight panel. All right, GMT's famous bag o bags These are Interesting in that they're, um, instead of being deep, they actually are wider bags to make it easier to get in and out of, whether that's a company-wide change or just for this game. So we've got our bag of plastic standee holders, to hold the standees, obviously. And then we've got cubes in various colors, red, green, yellow, black. And we have our combat dice. These are pretty good size, and almost uh, looks like 60 millimeters. And they're so we've got a half a heart, a broken heart, a, a hit, I would guess, and then two blanks and a defense icon. That's what the dice are made of. We have six of those, and they work. So we got two and a half hearts, and then we've got a couple of draw bags here. We've got a black bag with a biohazard symbol and just a kind of a play, plain grayish, grayish bag as well. And I just said grayish, didn't I? All right, we've got three packs of cards here. Search card, fake card is what's showing. And then we've got this other pack here. We'll open them up and see what they are. All right, so the three stacks of cards actually turn out to be three independent decks of cards. The first one was kind of blocked because we had these reference cards. There's four, one for each player, obviously. So you have to the different actions that you can take. Uh, just a nice little reference deck there. And then paired with that one was a set of event cards. These have a brown back to them. Look at a couple. Crisis at the ER. Good Samaritan Hospital Area 2G. If the area is compromised, draw four cubes from the biohazard bag and apply their effects. If it's not compromised, draw two cubes from the biohazard bag. And there are, let's see, 44 of these. And then poor perimeter security, draw a fate number to get a track number. All units, all player units on that track which share an area with a horrors unit each take one hit. All civilian units on that track that share an area with a horrors unit are eliminated. So that's an example of the event cards. And then we've got those fake cards that we're just talking about here. They have an orange and yellow back. And it looks like you spawn in this one. There's no event. Spawn on track one, activate tracks two and three. Spawn on the chaos, activate two and five. So those are the fake cards. And then finally, we've got those search cards. And they have a green back. Look at those. Senior Citizen's bus tour appears out of nowhere. One of your lead scouts almost gets run over by a gigantic tour bus. On board is a group of senior citizens from the Shady Acres Retirement Home. They are very upset that their tour of casinos has been rudely interrupted. But they do have tons of chocolate chip cookies and babushkas. Place the Shady Acres Seniors VIP Civilian Unit in this area along with two supplies. So. Plum Island Strong. If the Great South Bay Bridge has four or more damage, one person on a bicycle, yes, with a basket, makes it over the bridge. Each player receives one supply, and so on and so forth. So those are the search cards. All right, so taking a look at the uh, game board here. It is a uh, eight panel uh, GMT, uh, GMT board. So coming in at about 34 by 22. Well, you can see where it's got all the different sections, kind of like down in a grid. And at the top here, you can see the we have the tracks one through six. 
that are going to activate and move following, I assume, these arrows and the different things they're going to be doing while you're moving around taking care of things. Town dump, police headquarters. I like the, I just like the, I like the look of it. I like the simplicity. I like how it's overlaid as an island. I see the ship there. Um, the artwork is very, very nice. We've got a ball field. There's the high school, Pro Corporation. And your characters are going to interact with this board. And save the day. And save Plum Island. So it says it's about a 34 by 22 map. It does go, unfortunately, um, it's designed to go portrait long ways. So that makes it a little difficult for a solo player, but you can just turn it sideways and read sideways, but that's cool. Had to be what it was. Might've been cool as an option if they had printed on the back of the board, the same map with just every, all the graphics turned this way. So it would be easier to read for someone who would be sitting on it on the side and playing. But anyway, that is the board for Plum Island Horror. And the graphics are by Terry Leeds. All right, so if you pick up a copy of the Plum Island Horror from GMT Games, designed by Herman Lutman, you're gonna get the three decks of cards that we just look, looked at. We've got the bag of cubes, the draw bags, biohazard and the regular one, six combat dice, bag of standee holders, for these standees that are coming, a bag of bags to help organize. You're gonna get a half sheet. You're gonna get that. Oops. You're gonna get that game board that we took a look at. You're gonna get one half sheet of markers and three sheets, four sheets of markers, counters, and standees. A quick reference guide and a VIP civilians guide. A turn track, and along with three other tracks you're gonna need for the game and a place to store your biohazard cubes and hit cubes. You're gonna get faction boards for the different factions in the game. The 36 page Plum Island Horror Reference Guide and the 32 page Plum Island Horror Rule Book. And that is everything that comes in the Plum Island Horror. Oh, wasn't that scary? Solo and cooperative game from GMT and Herman Lutman. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.